wake up, wake up, I don't wanna wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, I don't wanna wake up, wake up. I'm Daniel Secton. Earlier this month, I had the privilege of interviewing TV's Mark L. Wahlberg. Mr. Wahlberg is an alumni of my high school, West Florence High School, and he's hosted numerous shows such as Russian Roulette, Moment of Truth on Fox, and the number one show on PBS, Antiques Roadshow. In the interview, we cover topics such as his childhood, his time at West Florence High School, the Young Americans organization, some shows that he's hosted and some shows that he would like to host, and most importantly and most seriously, Snooky and the Jersey Shore. Enjoy the interview. We're here with Mr. Mark L. Wahlberg, West Florence alumni and host of PBS's number one show, Antiques Roadshow. How are you doing today, Mr. Wahlberg? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Now, I know that you graduated from West Florence in 1980, and I just wanted to know, looking back on all your high school memories, is there one that you could pinpoint as your favorite? Well, as I walk into West Florence today, um, I can't say there's one, because every single hall, every single room, has a memory for me. Yes, sir. I mean, this is the stage where I did uh, the shows I did with Night Sounds, which was before Night Edition, and all the school plays we did, and the assemblies. I was just telling you before we started rolling tape that there was an assembly projecting what life would be like in the year 2000 that I distinctly remember sitting out there and hearing. So you've been on this stage a number of times. I've been on this stage and in those seats and in that office with the principal several times, too. So well, all of them have memories. <laughs> Not all of them good. It's really easy to get in trouble while you're in high school. Did mm -hmm. you ever get into any trouble at West Florence? Uh, I got into quite a bit of trouble. Um, I had a little bit of a smart mouth. Okay. So I, I kind of wised off in biology class in 10th grade and I got suspended for that. Only an overnight I got back for that. But that took me out of the running for any like class, big class oh. office because uh, I got in trouble on that one. And then, uh, you know, I never really got in. You know, it's certainly not the kind of trouble that you get concerned about, you know, drugs or alcohol yes, or fighting or anything like that, but just usually saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Funny, but inappropriate. And the Young Americans is an organization that's really shaped you into who you are today and mm -hmm. given you some great opportunities. Could you tell me a little bit about the sure. Young Americans organization? Sure. The Young Americans has changed since I got in the group okay. um, back in 1981, but um, it has always been uh, a nonprofit singing and dancing group. It's the first choir to sing choral music and put movement to it in 1962. And since then they've evolved and, and it was great for me in that it was um, sort of the ticket from here to California for me. And it gave me some performance experience that I don't think a, a young guy can get that many hours on stage with that kind of training. And it wasn't just about singing and dancing. As a matter of fact, I'm not a great singer or a dancer, but what's great about the way that they approach performance is they find what is you, put that on stage, and that usually works for the audience. Awesome. Now the work they do is touring the world and they go into schools all over the world and in two and a half days, three days time, they take local students who may or may not have had exposure to music and arts and they teach them a fully staged show that they perform on the third day. And That's while incredible. it's about music, it's really about transformation. Things happen. Awesome. And you're bringing that to West Florence, correct? I believe March, is that right? Do you know? Yes, sir. I think we're so. coming here in March. I saw the night edition last night, the new group of kids, and they're great, they're and they're going to be phenomenal when we get done with them. That's right. I yeah. can imagine. And at the public school gala last night, you sang a rendition of a piece <laughs> of one of your auditions for the Young Americans by Barry Manilow. Yeah. It was so good that I wanted to ask you if you could possibly do an encore for me. You know, I, I woke up this morning regretting that I did it, but I'll do it for you. And the story goes that I was auditioning for the Young Americans, and like I said, I was in Night Sounds, I was in choir here at, uh, at West Florence, it's an honors chorus, we called it at the time. But I wasn't the greatest singer. I could carry a tune, but I wasn't great. And in my audition, they said, uh, do you know anything by Barry Manilow? They thought they wanted to hear a ballad. And I said, the only song I know is the one we're singing in high school, but I only know the bass part. And it went like this. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. Do, do, do. Young girls cry. Music. The songs. Just as good the second time. Yeah. And that's yeah. what got you the part? If you want to buy my CD, I, mean, I you would can love download to. that on iTunes. Awesome. It's okay. Pretty hot. Awesome. Uh, you know what? I think despite that, they decided to take me. I think they said, <laughs> okay. this kid really needs some help, and we've got to get him out of here. So. 
Well, they definitely picked the right person. Okay. So you've hosted tons of shows, Russian Roulette, Temptation Island, Moment of Truth, and of course Antiques Roadshow. Out of all the jobs you've had that you've turned from a regular show to a successful show, what's, what's your favorite job you've ever had? You know, I get that question quite a bit, and, and to be honest with you, um, it's hard to say because each one has something that has brought to my career and my life that's different. So for instance, Temptation Island has to be top uh, when it comes to location because I was working in Costa Rica and Belize and Honduras. My family got to come and it was, you know, it's where you want to go on vacation. Working on a vacation. Right. That was my work. Russian Roulette may have been the most fun. It's a game show and we do game shows different than you do other shows. We do six episodes in a day. So you're cranking them out, wow. and you get a rhythm about it. But what was fun about it was it's a game show, so nobody's really getting hurt. And you are getting to tell some jokes and be funny, so that was fun. And then um, Moment of Truth was fun because it was a full plate from a hosting standpoint. Okay. You really had to roll with the punches. But Antiques Roadshow is probably the most rewarding experience in that. The subject matter is something I feel good about. The travel is fun, and the people I meet are just great. Awesome. And speaking of Moment of Truth, uh, that's just, I'm a big fan of that show, and it was a different experience because you really had people answering possibly self degrading questions yeah. right in front of their family members, their close friends on national television. Do you mind if we take a look at a clip from that? We must. Go ahead. Brandon Correa is a 30 year old waiter from Hermosa Beach, California. Have you ever taken another server's tip and kept it for yourself? Yes. True. Do you use the lack of money? as an excuse to keep from proposing to Marissa. Yes. True. It's all right. In the past year, have you ever sent flirtatious text messages to any woman other than Marissa? Yes. True. Do you sometimes feel that Marissa is boring? Yes. True. This man has just on national television told his girlfriend that she's boring, he's flirted with other women, he's making excuses to propose to her. Here's what I want to know. When those cameras turn off, what happens? Does girlfriend jump out of the couch and tackle boyfriend? You would think. I know you that could end up pretty messy. I'll tell you the truth on this, is that um, the show was over the line and crazy. It wasn't something that I ever loved. Uh, but I, I did as well as I could with it. And but the, what people need to realize is that the people that were, on, were contestants on that show at, were asked the questions that are on the show two weeks prior to coming on the show. And then they invited their family and friends to come there. So there's nothing to stop them from telling their family and friends what they're going to reveal. That's not to say that they always did. But you know, there was very little drama after the taping. People That's kind of surprising. were in it because they wanted to be in it. Family members kind of took the hit and then they kind of laughed it off afterwards. And I can't really explain that, except to say that for some people, the information, the important stuff, the intimate things you need to discuss that we would discuss around our kitchen table in our home is too hard for them to discuss in an intimate setting. And when you put it on a game show situation like that, they can kind of fall back on, well, the game made me do it. But so they think, wanted to say it all along. So you think that maybe they just decided that being on a game show and getting that television was worth the potential damage it can yes. cause that family? Yes, and as the host, my stance was always, you may think this is a good idea, but I know it's a bad idea. Yeah. So I was constantly encouraging them to stop and take the money. Stop. You've had enough. Go home. Before they do some real damage. And I would say to them, this next question is one that I, I really don't want to read. And they would say, no, I'm okay with it. And I said, you may be okay with it, but I don't want to read it on TV. Yes, but they didn't really listen to me. Yeah, I'm guessing he didn't propose to Marissa after that. Uh, you know, love is a strange thing. <laughs> People seem to kind of... You know, everybody's relate. What I have learned is that everybody's relationship is unique unto themselves. Okay. And what would be a deal breaker for me, people just laugh it off. That's some tough stuff to laugh it off. Can't be tough. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the show that has really just blown up for you and been super successful, Antiques Roadshow. I just want to know, what do you think separates it from other shows? What do you think makes it the number one show on PBS and such a hit besides the host? <laughs> oh boy, you are a silver tongue devil. But the truth is. That's the only show in my career that I was a fan of before I was a host. It's been on the air for 16 years. I've done it for seven, so it was already a hit before I got there. All I could do was screw it up. <laughs> Luckily, that didn't happen. No, didn't. Why is it a hit? Well, I think it's probably a couple things. I think people, when they're flipping through the channels, they see an item and they're waiting for that little thing to come across the bottom. Ring, how much is it worth? And so people are constantly intrigued to see, is that person about to get rich? And can I get rich? Okay. And that's sort of what stops the channel changer. After that, why people linger 
is because it's, um, I think it's an exciting way to learn some living history. When you start hearing about something that, you know, if you hear it in history class that this war happened between these dates and that, but then you see the saver that actually took someone's life and it was somebody's great grandfather who did it. When it all relates like that, it's really yeah. exciting for everyone. And I think that, you know, um, I always joke that history, while often traditionally is the boring class in school, should never be the boring class in school because those stories are action adventure movies. I mean, the story of history are people putting their lives on the line for things they care about. All the wars, the struggles, right. the passion, the hate. It's, it's, it's an action adventure movie you pay a lot of money to go see. Exactly. Exactly. If told that. And it really happened. It really happened. Do you have a greater interest in antiques since you've been doing that show now? Are you when you see something? Are you? Oh. Yeah. I'm not collecting because uh, it costs a lot of money to collect this stuff. Okay. But every time I go to a city and we do a new piece on something, I'm like, I, I gotta have Winchester rifles now. I gotta <laughs> have those kind of watches. You know, uh, whatever it is becomes so intriguing. And not only that, I'm dealing with these appraisers who, whatever they're talking about, it's their passion. So by the time I'm done talking with them, I'm like. They make it sound so good yes. that I'm like, you know, I need to have a little glass bunnies or something because they seem awesome. They really sell it to you. Yeah, they And really I guess sell it to everyone. That's right. Well, you also just recently were in a video on TFM or TotalFatMove.com. You started with Jimmy, the star of Frat Life. And now we're going to take... So are y'all hip to Frat Life out here? Is everyone, that going on out here? This is... Everyone's got that as a bookmark on their computers. It's, oh, it's big. No. So it's, oh, it's going no. on. But it's a hilarious video. I couldn't stop watching it. Well, I need to tell you about this so that people don't think I'm just a potty mouth <laughs> troublemaker. But my son, who's now a sophomore at VMI, Jimmy Tatro, who's the head of that video, Frat Life, and all those videos, was a buddy of mine, very much like you, that at our high school in, in California, he did, it was Notre Dame High School, he was the anchor on Notre Dame okay. TV, and awesome. TV, constantly doing videos. So when he got to college, the first one he did was the first installment of Frat Life because he got in a fraternity. Which exploded. And it had a million views. And it was ridiculous. And, you know, being a fraternity man myself, we kind of laugh at it. And the East Coast, West Coast rivalry, he's throwing, I mean, South, it's really the South and the West, he's throwing this rivalry is actually heating up. But he did the first video, it was huge. The second video was not as big, but still well received. And I joked, I said, buddy, you know, I got to be in one of these with you. <laughs> so I showed up, he had it written. I kind of went with it. It's certainly inappropriate, but it's for a certain audience. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I did get to smack some guy down, so that was cool. Well, I awesome. smacked me down. At least I'm threatened. Well, yeah, well, we have a, uh, a clip that's been completely <laughs> censored, if you wouldn't mind watching. There's that. nothing going to be left if you said that. <laughs> um, what's going on here? Jimmy, this is an intervention. Television host Mark L. Wahlberg? That's right. Can someone please tell me what's going on here? Your friends and family have gotten together because they're concerned for your well-being. Frankly, Jimmy, you've become too fratty. Come on, guys. You know I'm not actually like that. It's just for the videos. I'm just kidding. You... Everybody calm down. Just, just calm down. Jimmy, what we're going to do now is a little test. Wait, maybe you guys are right. Maybe I am too fratastic. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, Jimmy, did you really mean that? <laughs> nah, I'm in a frat. Nice try, Walford. I talked to you about this a little bit last night. I wanted to support Jimmy any way I can. He's, first of all, all through high school, he was pretty much hanging out at my house because that's the way all the guys did. But what's, what's key about Jimmy is whether you agree with the, um, with the content, because it's over the line. This is meant for college age and high school age people and there's a lot of bad words and we kind of went with a joke. And, but the point is, is that technology allows Jimmy to take a camera, in an afternoon, he can write something on his computer, he can shoot it, he can edit it, he can get it up on the internet, and people can respond to it immediately. Which couldn't have happened before. Couldn't have happened, you know, it's five years, six years. 
you could do that kind of stuff. And I really wanted to support Jimmy because I think while he's raw and his choices are a little over the line, he's as much an artist as anybody is and he's growing and, and he's learning. he's good at what he does. Well, he's getting good at what he does. And what's important is he's doing something he's passionate about. Comedy, improv comedy, sketch comedy, it's a very difficult thing. And every time you throw it out there, as many people that love you are those people telling you you're an idiot. As you watch the thread, you can see. The Although, comments. I think I got away pretty okay on that. I think so. I think everybody loved your party. I can't stop watching yeah. the video. It's hilarious. So, just like you, I mean, it's different than when I was coming up. If I had an idea for a television show or, or any idea to get a camera and to it's edit hard, it. Hard, impossible. Almost. And, and expensive. Now, it can be done with my iPhone and up and for the world to view. Yes, sir. And from that, a ball can roll. So. Uh, I was thrilled to be a part of it. I, I told him, I said, Jimmy, I'm pretty much counting on you to make me hip and get my career rolling. So, well, you know, maybe I'll be that video. Like four. <laughs> and it's the video's done really well. It's all over TFM. And oh. well, I, I want to know what was it like working with Jimmy? Is he as fratty behind the scenes in real life as he is on camera? Or is it like he said just for the just for the camera? First of all, that you're asking me that question. If he could hear it, his ego would get even bigger than it already <laughs> is. Um, Jimmy, I'll tell you. What is interesting about Jimmy that I found is that he knows what he wants to do. And where we in television that I grew up in, and I'm doing, you make sure every take is exactly the way you want it. We might do every take two, three, four, five times to get it right. Jimmy's rolling. You've got one take to get it done. And he shoots that up. We shot the whole video in an hour and a half, maybe. That's um, and his friends all know what they're doing and they move quick. And I don't always agree with Jimmy's timing and his comedy. But Jimmy knows what he wants, and you know he's both performing, writing, and directing these things. So I, my hat's off to him. He's a um, he's a pretty funny guy, and is you know when they would hang out at my house, and it would be all the boys just hanging out. Jimmy, it'd be two in the morning, and he'd be walking around with a laptop with the with the built-in camera recording, and he's making a movie in my house just for fun. So yes, I mean, you saw the ones that are on YouTube. There are fifteen of them shot in my house that no one should ever see. <laughs> That, that's just what he does, he's just doing so, what he loves. Yeah. If you had to rate your own frattiness level from a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least, 10 being frat star in frat life, uh, what would you rate yourself? Well, first of all, um, the, East, the, West Coast South, uh, the West Coast fraternity and the South rivalry that's starting on the TFM site and stuff like that, I'm a Southern fraternity man. We would never call it a frat. It's exactly. a fraternity. And we have a higher standard. It's a uh, different, it's a yeah. whole different scene. We don't wear so. tank tops. And they drink a little bit too heavy in the, in the West, although I think they do it in the South as well. Um, so it's an entirely different style. But, but for those people watching this, and people need to know that while a lot of that is really how Jimmy is, he's a good guy. It's all a joke. Um, he's, he's nutty, and uh, he certainly is in a fraternity, and he certainly does like to party, but it's all but a spoof on those guys who are boneheads who are, yes. right. And in the South, you know, there's some knuckleheads in the South, you know, that, you know, you'll see them crushing a beer can on their head. <laughs> so so shot to Jaeger and all that. So Southern fraternity, scale of one to 10. I'm um, far better. Far we better. invented it. So in 11, or uh, maybe even 15. 15. Yeah, we invented okay. the whole concept of fraternity. And when the West finally became even part of the country, they tried to catch on to what we had pretty much so invented. You're pretty much an innovator of frat. Uh, creator. We're the, creator. We're the Jefferson and, okay. and uh, Ben Franklin and, you know, founding fathers up. Well, thank you for that. A lot of frat guys have to appreciate that right well, now. It's, it's a cross we all have to bear. We, we appreciate what you do. Have to do it. And so you've been in television for over 20 years. And is there, I know you see a lot of shows come on. Is there any show you have your eye on or any show that you've said, man, I, I wish I would have hosted that show? Um, well... You know, the one that, I, that got away was that I really would have loved to do is The Price is Right. Drew Carey got that one. I love that old game show. I like game shows. It's a shows. great show. Um, and the truth is, um, I like a lot of TV. I love American Idol. I love Dancing with the Stars. I love all those competition reality shows. I don't particularly love or want to work in the docuseries world, but I watch it a lot. Docuseries being, um, you know, Jersey Shore and, and, and those kind of shows. They're not really host driven. But I can't stop. And the train wreck aspect of it, you know what I mean by that? When you watch Dance Moms or Toddlers and Tiaras. And Anybody just explodes on each other. Well, it's all about, and, and if you watch closely, you can see that not all of it is real, real because the camera's got to be there somewhere. 
So that moment that happened when the dance mom was walking down the hallway to knock on Abby's door to yell at her about the costume her daughter didn't get. What if I had to tell a cameraman? Right, the cameraman had to set that shot and you know it's all there. Um, so there's a little bit of... How much reality is it? It's like professional wrestling. Okay. We enjoy it. You know, we've always enjoyed watching it, right? But we know but we suspend real. our reality a little bit okay. to enjoy it. I, I, that, that's not really the, the world I want to be in, but I do sure, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't watch it. We were watching Jersey Shore last night. Poor Snooki. She's heartbroken. I know. I feel Johnny. so bad for Snooki. Well, she shouldn't have done that in the club, you know, that's when her boyfriend fault. flies all the way there to see her. And, but I guess that's just Snooki being Snooki. Snooki As Jay Wow said, you're just doing you. She's, she's just doing her. That's it. She's snooking. She wanted to smush. <laughs> well, we just had interviews for our, our <laughs> newscasts. My daughter is cringing. I kind of realize. I have a 60 year old daughter. She's like, oh, God, you went too far. <laughs> we just had auditions for Wake Up West Florence. That's what I was actually about to say. I feel like that's something that you would have auditioned for if you were here. Oh, Audition well, for? I would have paid somebody off to get the job. Well, we handed everyone a script that auditioned, and it said, a rabid donkey has just stampeded through the cafeteria and you're reporting on it. So if you'd like a chance to audition, I'd love to hear it. I would like to do that. Let's do this. All right, a rabid donkey, a rabid donkey stampeded through the cafeterias. Knocking down students, right. eating the trash, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Ready? Should I do it into this camera? That camera's good. Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg for Wake Up West Florence with this news update. Crisis in the cafeteria, a rabid Donkey, that's right, a donkey with rabies, has stampeded and gone on a horrible rampage in the West Lawrence cafeteria. Children have been st uh, stopped, and ironically, as rabid as the donkey was, it still refused to eat the food in the cafeteria, which says that even in its insane sense, it had enough sanity not to eat the food. And yet, the donkey um, uh, took no prisoners. And here's a uh, just a couple of the things that we've learned from the students that have been trampled. Apparently, I heard a, a, earlier there was a girl who was screaming, help me, help me, and ass is chasing me. And that seemed a little, it didn't actually scare too many people, but when you look at the clip, you will see that ass actually is a rabid donkey. Let's go to the clip now. See, I know that you have Antiques Roadshow, it's going well, you're doing the California lottery, but if things don't work out, I've got that to fall back you on. have a job here, wow. and listen, it doesn't pay that well, but it's a great time. Listen, I work for PBS, it probably pays more than that. So <laughs> glad right. to be here. And the last thing I just want to end on, at the gala last night, you had a lot of people speak about you, famous people, people from your school, and they all came to one common denominator, and that's that no matter how big you get, no matter how successful you get, and it's constantly increasing, you always come back and give back to your community, and we just appreciate that. And Speaking of that, you played on the soccer team in West Florence. Well, I was on the soccer team. I didn't play with You were on the soccer yeah. team. Well, the soccer coach obviously remembered you because we wanted to give back something to you. Coach Andrews decided that he would present you with a West Florence soccer alumni t-shirt. Oh, so really? This is yours to keep. That's fantastic. And next year, I, I understand they're going to have another alumni match. And uh, I'm gonna come back and uh, you're gonna come kick some rabid donkey. Well, next year I'll be an alumni, so maybe we can play together. You bet. I hope awesome. together, not against me, because I play dirt. Oh man, well yeah. I hope so too. I'd rather have you on my team than against me. Well, hey, thank thanks. you so much for being here. My pleasure. It's been great. I know you're gonna be a superstar. So thank you uh, for letting me be on the early uh, installment of your career. Well, thank you so much. This has been Wake Up West Florence. I'm Daniel Sekton. Signing off. We're out.